This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. All across Wisconsin from Civic Media, this is Up North News Radio. Now, live from our Lake Wissota studio, here's the founding editor of Up North News, Pat Brightlow. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Up North News Radio, unabashedly Wisconsin, brought to you by Courier Newsroom and carried by our friends here on the Civic Media Radio Network, 706. And it's nice to have you here up north on this Tuesday morning, October 29th, one week to go until Election Day. And coming up in just a couple of moments here, we're going to talk to State Senator Brad Paff and talk about a race that's... uh, going on right now for re-election in the Cooley region and parts of uh, West Central Wisconsin. Then at 7.30, we'll talk to our friend Hans Breitenmoser, a dairy farmer from up near Merrill, and we'll do basically one final review of all of our many conversations about the rural Wisconsin economy and farming and the various races and campaigns out there and who's proposing things that would be good for rural Wisconsin and who's proposing things that would not. Now uh, that's all coming up along with Chad Holmes as well. Uh, but first, he says begrudgingly on this National Cat Day. Uh, look, Brittany Merlot joins us at, with one of her. How many? How many? Are you a cat, are you a cat lady? Are you officially? Are you wearing that moniker proudly now? Yeah, I, I'm okay. fine with that. I've got okay. two cats. I've had them. Oh my gosh, for 14 years now. They have been all over wisconsin with me so oh my goodness yes i've got butters right here i just woke him up for this so butters <laughs> what's the, he's so, half asleep and you have you, yep. you have two cats you said i do what's the other one sister what's the other one's baby. name baby baby and butters baby and butters i know <laughs> it's actually from south park and then the baby i just couldn't think of a name so <laughs> So, babe, oh, we ran out of ideas like, at one. This. <laughs> I did. <laughs> the cat just did the most National Cat Day thing ever. That's great. Peace, right? <laughs> yep. We are uh, on a weather whipsaw here in terms of temperatures. And, of course, everything shorts. is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Greg would like to, again, point out that he's in shorts. Uh, Brittany's in a nice dress. I'm in short sleeves. By Thursday, that's all going to change. And it's going to change bigly as somebody likes to say uh take take us through literally the highs and lows of the next you know 48 to 72 hours here Brittany. all right buckle up because we're on a roller coaster ride Mm -hmm. (laughs) we are climbing that hill right now uh warm front is passing over the state um record high overnight low temperatures for many areas across the area right now this morning temperatures were at 64 degrees as a low in madison that shattered the old records. Same thing in Tawasa, Eau Claire, St. Croix Falls, La Crosse. You're all feeling that. I mean, you can head outside right now like Greg is in shorts, <laughs> a tank top, and you'll be just fine. No jacket whatsoever because it's a windy and warm day today. We're going to have those glasses out of the south up to 35 miles per hour, and we're going to hit highs in the upper 70s to low 80s which is outrageous right now for this time of year. It's gonna break more records all across the state and it's not gonna stop breaking records there because our overnight lows tonight stay extremely mild into the 60s, which is gonna break those overnight morning low temperatures once again. And then tomorrow we hold on to the heat still, maybe not the 80s, but low to mid 70s, again, still breaking records in different areas. And then we start to really hit a crash. Now we're going to see rain, even some thunderstorms. We have the potential for severe weather on Wednesday afternoon and even into our Thursday on Halloween. What's going to happen is that rain up north is actually going to have the potential to switch over to some snowfall on early Friday morning into some places as I'm sorry, early Thursday morning into some places as well. So it is a special. Spooky forecast from heavy, heavy rain where we could see one to two inches on Wednesday in some areas, especially right now from La Crosse all the way to Green Bay. 
and then that snowfall could accumulate into areas up north like Rusk, Price, Washburn, Bayfield counties. And that, again, is going to be pulling our temperatures down. If you know snow is involved, the entire state is going to be dropping as we go into Halloween night. In fact, we crashed to highs in the 50s, 60s, all the way to lows below freezing. And we're going to be holding there with highs in the upper 40s to low 50s afterwards. You missed one weather advisory that uh, bears repeating that comes out every year at about this time. The National Weather Service reminds people that about this time of year, people of a certain age and up will talk about nothing but the Halloween blizzard of 1991 for sure. the next few days. So please keep <laughs> that in mind. You've been warned. Good morning from Tigerton. Rob says it's clear in 52. Uh, he's going to Gillette today to help Kristen campaign and meet people. Well, that's nice. And for people who travel nice. at night, watch out for deer as they are in their rut. At home, I have plenty of cats who are mouse hunters, he says. I got most of my sweatshirts and hoodies in my truck because it's cool in the morning and then it warms up during the day. It's true. Then you get to that point where you're like, where are my where are my jackets? Where are my sweatshirts? <laughs> Whatever. And you realize they've all been they've all moved bit by bit over time. Oh, I just look okay, at my but, wife yep. and she's wearing all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, at yes. least at least you know where to find it. Instead of the walk in closet, she's a yeah. walk in closet. Thank you. I'll Boom. be at the laughing tap uh, sometime soon. Thank you, Brittany, so much. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thanks. All right. Uh, reminder, you can sign up for our daily newsletter. Head to upnorthnewswi.com. Uh, stories there include uh, one about small towns and the random reasons that they're famous. You know, like Boulder Junction, which claims to be the musky capital of the ro world, Eagle River, the snowmobile capital of the world, and, and so forth. Read that story. Along with one about what economists have to say about Donald Trump's plans for the economy and how it would... Uh, it would not be great, according to 16 different economists who've all won a little something called the Nobel Prize. So they, they have a pretty good idea of what they're talking about. Again, sign up for the newsletter, upnorthnewswi.com. As we turn back toward what's going to be happening next week all across Wisconsin, I would remind folks that the, the Cooley region, with its ups and downs of its many ravines, is, is kind of a good geographical representation of today's up and down and back and forth politics. But a lot of the voters there are really more like the adjoining driftless area, more steady and moderate. The 32nd State Senate District is made up of parts of both regions, where incumbent Senator Brad Paff is facing a challenge that'll test whether moderation is still a quality rewarded by voters in a, a year that is turbulent unlike any other and senator brad Papp joins us now from on alaska to talk more about the campaign senator Papp, good morning well pat it's great to hear your voice and to see you good morning good to see you as well uh having been in in your position and uh knowing just how busy things are knocking on doors and and talking to folks out there how are you feeling with a week to go well, I will say this, I'm feeling really good. Uh, obviously, we've got work to do, uh, without a doubt. This is a topsy-turvy election season and anything can happen. Um, so you keep yourself very grounded um, and make sure that you're out in the communities. And you know me, Pat, I love to be out in those rural communities and there's uh, nothing better than a hot cup of coffee um, out there talking to uh, voters in the local diners uh, first thing in the morning. And the fact of the matter is, Brad, that th that is... The way I've described the district uh, is, is is the way that it is, uh, and it has it been is. described that way before, that um, it's not it's not purple for the sake of being purple. It just appears to be in the DNA of folks. E everywhere we go, everywhere we hear, I vote for the person, not the party. A lot of times th that's some wishful thinking on the part of the person who says it. I feel like you live in the neck of the woods that really lives up to, to that saying. Well, I mean, it is true. I mean, these the people here in uh, the Driftless region, I mean, they're hardworking, uh, they're resilient, they're very dedicated, uh, they love their family, uh, but they also, quite frankly, you know, want to make sure that they get their fair share. And, um, you know, we have seen within our political apparatus, uh, we have seen where, you know, our rural communities continue to lose people. And uh, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not forgotten here. And um, that is something that I've done my level best to make sure that voices are being heard. And, um, you know, I think that we can point, quite frankly, to what's happening right now in the majority party in the Wisconsin state legislature. When you look at the fact that uh, we've saw two uh, healthcare facilities up in the Chippewa Valley, 
which you know well, uh, which uh, sadly have uh, closed their doors. And we have an opportunity in the Wisconsin State Legislature in order to expand Badger Care. So 90,000 plus Wisconsin residents would have, residents would have access to health care that they currently don't have access to. And we could reinvest the money that we received from the federal government, $1.7 billion, we could reinvest that back into our rural health care infrastructure. But instead, partisan politics is taking place. We've also seen a situation uh, here in the town of Campbell in La Crosse County in which uh, too many people have been drinking bottled water, been drinking bottled water for the last four years um, while you know politics is being played with the Joint Finance Committee the majority party in the legislature. Uh, the voters here, may they be Republican or Democrat, they see through that. They know that there's politics that's being played for politics sake, and they're very frustrated with that. And so, you know, I need to keep myself grounded. I need to make sure that I'm continuing to listen and to advocate. Um, but, uh, you know, I have someone that uh, wears my pride of uh, my rural roots on my sleeve. And I will say this, is that uh, we need to continue to invest in places we need to invest in rural communities, and we need to make sure that uh, people that live in rural areas uh, have opportunities to succeed like everyone else. What, what does it say that so much rural investment has been made by the Biden-Harris administration and by Governor Tony Evers essentially filling in gaps that the Republican-led legislature wouldn't do? Because these are not Democratic strongholds, of course, by, by any measure, and yet all these investments are being made. Yeah, and that's a very good question, Pat. And thank you for focusing on that. And, you know, we as policymakers need to make sure that we can also message and we need to get that message out, the work that we are uh, are doing. Uh, but it can't just be a one and done. Um, and I really do appreciate the infrastructure of work that's been done uh, by the Biden administration because that's long term. Uh, but we need to continue to invest, um, you know, long term. But we need to be there on a daily basis as well. And that is why I'm focusing on public education, because one of the things that continues to uh, unite our communities is the importance of our public schools. And, uh, you know, if we want to make sure that we can continue to have, you know, our rural communities move forward. We need to have a strong uniting force, which is public education. And I'd like to say that public education, regardless of one zip code, if a child grows up, regardless of their zip code, they need to have an opportunity to succeed. And we can do that through through public education. But getting back to your main point, that is we have to continue to message, we have to continue to listen. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, brings all of our attention is the fact that we continue to lose people in rural areas and uh, we lose our young. And that scares us because, um, you know, we want our children um, to be able to succeed. We want our children to, um, you know, to grow and to mature, but we also want to make sure that, you um, and we get an opportunity to see them. And when they leave these rural communities, they may not always come back. And that scares us. Hold that thought, Brad. We're going to pick it up on the other side of this break on Up North News Radio on the Civic Media Radio Network. You're listening to Civic Media. You can tune into any of our live shows on any radio station across the state with the Civic Media app. Find us in your phone's app store and listen anytime, anywhere. Seven days, folks, and you can shake it off all you want. Election Day is just one week away. Quick check on sports here at 721. Uh, the Bucks have dropped to one and three on the season after the Boston Celtics beat the Bucks 119 to 108. The Bucks next play Thursday at Memphis. The Badger football team is at Iowa this coming Saturday. Pre-game at 4.30 on Civic Media stations across Wisconsin and the Civic Media app. Sunday's Packer game against Detroit is a 3.25 kickoff pre-game at 1 o'clock on several Civic Media stations. The uh, Badger men's basketball team is uh, getting ready to get its season going. They're taking on River Falls Wednesday, and you can hear that game 6 p.m. Wednesday on stations in Amory, Wisconsin Rapids, Racine Kenosha, and Richland Center. The Badger men's hockey team plays Friday at Notre Dame. Coverage begins at 5.30 on WFHR in Wisconsin Rapids, and there's all kinds of high school sports that you can access across the Civic Media app as well. 
Let's continue our conversation now with State Senator Brad Paff, who's up for re-election in the 32nd District. And as I was looking through to uh, pass along your social media info here, Brad, uh, the, the website is bradpaff.com. Paff is P-F-A-F-F. Uh, at Facebook, it's Brad Paff for Wisconsin. And on Instagram, it's Brad Paff WI. But it was on the Facebook page that I noticed just now that for everything we've talked about, with Senator Tammy Baldwin being the first Democrat in over 20 years running for statewide office to be endorsed by the Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation, here I see you've got their endorsement as well for your state Senate race, which is, um, again, for a Democrat running, they don't have to endorse. Why do you think they did that? Well, first of all, I'm very appreciative of that. And I will say this. I think they recognize the fact that, um, you know, if we're going to continue to invest <clears throat> in Wisconsin and move Wisconsin forward, we need to make sure uh, that we work with uh, uh, legislators on both sides of the aisle. And, um, you know, I am uh, someone that, uh, you know, have, has reached out uh, to uh, Wisconsin Farm Bureau. I've sought, uh, you know, their thoughts and their ideas. Obviously, you know, I am, you know, very uh, clear minded on, you know, what what has happened in the past um, as far as some of their political endorsements. But I, I wanted to learn from them. And um, I wanted to hear hear their thoughts, and uh, I shared uh, their um, thoughts when they came to make sure that we have a strong uh, rural infrastructure. Roads and bridges are so very important. Uh, I share with them on the ideas that we need to continue to invest in new markets uh, for our our family farmers, and um, you know I also share with them the overall idea that um, you know we need to uh, recognize the fact that the um, you know, rural America is continuing to evolve and grow, and uh, there's changes that are taking place economically as well as socially. And uh, if we can continue to uh, uh, focus uh, attention on what's happening and make sure that there's freedoms uh, for, you know, our residents that live in rural areas, um, as well as those that live in, in urban and suburban areas. What we've seen, uh, Pat, is that we have really seen in this uh, last few years is this a, a tax on personal liberty. And, um, you know, that is just something that I think cuts across. It cuts across um, all different uh, political makeups. And, um, you know, I'm, I appreciate the fact that uh, the Wisconsin Farm Bureau has joined uh, other other groups in, in supporting um, my reelection to the state senate. Well, and I think it's in keeping with things that we see, uh, that we hear about anecdotally, but also the things that are quite uh, objectively apparent as well. From an anecdotal standpoint, I would point to uh, Alicia Saunders' comment on YouTube this morning. Voters have been telling me at the doors that they are Republican and are voting blue all down the ticket this year because they want better leadership. Then there are the objective things that we can see, like the Republican mayor of Waukesha, Sean Riley, campaigning in Waukesha yesterday with Tim Walz, who uh, would be the, the next Democratic vice president of the United States. A big banner over the top of where they were speaking that said country over party. Uh, Brad, for, for reasons that are, are readily apparent, and we don't have to worry about the reasons, but the evidence is that all over Wisconsin, all over this country, folks that typically voted Republican are feeling like something different needs to happen this year. I, I, I agree with that. I, I hear that every single day. I mean, there is a, I hate to use words like this, but there's a realignment that is taking place right now. Um, you know, we have seen something interesting that has uh, come into uh, our, our politics. And that is, is that rather than, you know, us focusing on, you know, what could be best in order to our economy or what kind of healthcare care policy, uh, what we're seeing is, is this politics of cultural resentment. And we're seeing where we're pulling people apart. And that's not who any of us are. And so uh, I do believe that from the mayor of uh, Waukesha uh, to, you know, my neighbors here in western Wisconsin, they are saying, you know, Brad, let's let's do something better. Let's do something different. You know, another example is I, I served with uh, Rob Coles in the Senate. Mm -hmm. You serve with him right now. His mm -hmm. saying that he's going to be voting for Vice President Harris and Governor Walls. Um, again, not everybody knows him, but he's the longest serving legislator right now. He's the longest serving Republican. And so folks that do know him, uh, that was a bit of a political earthquake. And again, strikes me as indicative of the environment we're in this year. 
I agree with that completely. For those that have worked with Rob Poles, I think we all know the fact that he's a very smart man and he cares greatly about his district and what he's trying to do as far as providing opportunities for people. So you have the longest serving, current longest serving Republican state senator uh, endorsing Harris for president. Uh, that says something. Um, but what it also says is this, is that, uh, you know, we we want something different than what what is taking place right right now. We know that we can do something better. And that is, is that, uh, you know, we may not always agree when it comes to every single thing, uh, but we know that uh, we need to move forward. And uh, this continuing to look backward and to pull people apart, uh, that just isn't healthy. And that just isn't who we are here in Western Wisconsin. And I, I will say uh, the people in the state of Wisconsin, uh, they know that we can do better. And that is why uh, Tony Evers continues uh, to uh, move forward uh, while the, re the leadership in Madison and the legislature, um, you know, they're just retreating. And, um, you know, they're not they're not providing a direction for us to move forward. Right. And uh, so all of that, plus the thing that we didn't even have time for, but in terms of the congressional race in that area, again, voters are looking at somebody so wildly extreme and volatile in Derek Van Orden, which, again, I think a turning away from Trumpism and what he's done is only going to help your own chances uh, for reelection in the 32nd district as well. Brad Paff, thank you so much. I appreciate the update. Uh, we will talk again after Election Day here. Thank you. Vote Rebecca Cook for Congress. Thank you very much. All Appreciate right. It. Thanks, Brad. Take care. When we come back, Hans Breitenmoser will join us and we'll talk about the rural economy and how that might affect your vote. That's coming up next on Up North News Radio, live from Lake Wissota on the Civic Media Radio Network. You're an organ donor, right? Well, here's a tragic fact. Approximately 20 people die each day waiting for precious donated organs. You could make a life-saving decision simply by getting that important dot on your driver's license. That little dot shows those who need to know that you've made a decision to donate organs at a critical time. Go to HeroicDeed.com to learn more about the importance of organ donation and how you can make your wishes known. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. HeroicDeed.com Chow in his jaw and a stranger pulled up and met him outside his barn. 7.34 now on this Tuesday morning, October 29th. One week to go till the 2024 election. Hans Brighton Moser, a dairy farmer from up in Lincoln County, uh, joins us uh, every other week by and large to talk a bit about uh, what political things are happening that might impact the rural economy in, in some way, shape, or form. So we get to have uh, one more discussion about that that we hope will maybe inform uh, some votes as we head into an area that is, uh, well, it, it again, it wasn't always Republican. It has been lately. It was Democratic for a, a long time. And as we just talked about with Senator Brad Paff, may, maybe some realignment work is at play here. Uh, Hans, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Pat. I'm fine. How are you? Uh, okay. I uh, heard you're a little under the weather, so hope, hopefully uh, on the mend soon, <laughs> soon better. We'll, 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 we'll manage. I, I'm pretty sure I'll survive. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Get, get, uh, as the guy who got um, his flu shot just last week, got the flu shot and the COVID shot and has the very sore arms to prove it. But is it is for all the uh, talk about election season, it's also uh, immunization season for those of us of a, of a certain age here. But let's get back to the uh, election season for a moment here. And I want to pick up where I left off with Brad Paff. You live in an area that is by no means democratic, uh, and that can be said about most of rural America right now. And yet you have had historic uh, levels of investment in the rural economy by both the Biden-Harris administration and by decisions made by Democratic Governor Tony Evers. Why do you think that is? Why, why were those decisions made and were they made with some kind of a political payoff in mind? Well, that's, you know, that's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, uh, when you have good government, good, you know, and a, and a solid foundation under your democracy, then funds will get allocated and invested and so forth, regardless of po po politics, right? The, 
the, the investments that have been made in rural America by Governor Evers and by the Biden administration had nothing to do with how people vote in this area. Imagine a future where that is not the case. Imagine a future where federal and state dollars go to areas that uh, vote the quote, right way and don't go to areas that vote, don't vote the right way. That's not, that's not what makes this country tick. And uh, that's not what's been happening. We're so fortunate uh, for, for in our area with, with uh, small local governments like Lincoln County and, and other small rural areas to be able to have access to ARPA funds to fix roads and so forth. Um, you know, for those of us who've been in local government, you understand how important those dollars are. And if they were based on political affiliations, holy smokes, would things go to seed pretty fast. Oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, so, again, it's where can that do the most good? And it does get to that underlying philosophy that government works. Government is good when you have good people who are service oriented and not just service oriented to their supporters only and not just to their zip code only, but where things are, are going to do the most good. Again, because of the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, you know, so, so many other initiatives that took place over the past four years, this might be an unfair question. But I want you to look ahead, you know, let's say 10 years, may, maybe longer. Do you feel like something in particular people are going to look back on and say, now that particular rural investment, that was a real difference maker? <laughs> well, I, I hope so. I mean, ARPA can be pointed to to do all sorts of good things. And in, in rural areas, it has a lot to do with road funding and so forth. Um, so the, I, my worry is that people have... To, fairly short memories and, and are not interested in getting into the weeds so much. So you can have pretty big, uh, pretty big things happen and people maybe don't appreciate them as much as they should. I mean, we could point to, um, you know, uh, Obamacare, but, but the investment or the inflation reduction act under Biden was the biggest thing, uh, in the history of ever. I mean, for, for decades and decades, we, we hadn't seen any kind of investment like that. And what I think the Democrats understand um, and just don't get enough credit for, uh, and as you pointed out earlier, economist after economist is looking at both plans of both presidential candidates and, and firmly lining up behind Harris. It's because the Democrats understand that if we if we invest at the local level, if we put money close to the ground, it grows. It's planting a seed. And it's it's not the trickle down nonsense that just doesn't work. And and that's what people that's what voters in rural areas have to remember and understand when they go to the ballot box. I feel. And, and yet, because a Senate candidate like Eric Hovde has so much money and the Republican Party backing people like Derek Van Orden has so much money. And of course, uh, Donald Trump's ads and the billionaires who are propping him up, they continue this uh, point that they make repeatedly and millions of americans believe it is that the whole reason we have inflation in this country and, and had runaway inflation was those investments that are made with the american rescue plan and uh with the bipartisan infrastructure law and now with the inflation reduction act and hans there just there never seems to be enough time in the day to set people down in front of a chalkboard or a whiteboard and explain to them the difference between what this spending did versus what, say, a $2 trillion tax cut to the wealthy would do instead. Well, exactly. And and for people who, who aren't asking for it and don't need it. And the other thing to remember with this whole recovery is that it, it was a recovery against uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, maybe that could have been managed a little better, uh, you know, on the front end and, and some of the deficit spending that took place and so forth prior to that. So I just, those dots just don't connect. Um, and, and economists will tell you that certainly there's been inflation, but I think the other important thing to remember is that, uh, the, the inflation that the United States suffered and the recovery that we've enjoyed post pandemic has been far better than any other country in the world. And I don't know why we shouldn't be be uh, giving the Biden and Harris administrations administration some credit for that. It's it's simply a fact. As is the record of not just uh, you know people in the executive branch like the Biden Harris team and the Evers team, but certain people in the legislative branch, which takes us back to the Senate race and Senator Tammy Baldwin, who long before this election cycle for years prior 
has a has a record that I guess Hans I would describe as solid, if not outright stellar, when it comes to bringing home the bacon for the rural economy. Oh, I would tend to agree. I mean, Senator Baldwin has been just a champion in Washington, and and you know that you you see these ads that try and pin her down uh, on silly things. It's just it's just such nonsense. Look at her record. Just look at at the record of the person that you're voting for versus the person that's uh, looking to get her job. And and uh, there's a, such a stark difference. Senator Baldwin has been a champion for Wisconsin and certainly a champion for Wisconsin rural areas. And I mean, my goodness, you know, you've got the Farm Bureau endorsing her. I mean, the Farm Bureau is hardly a, a group of flaming liberals. You know, this is a pretty conservative organization, but they're seeing they're seeing what Tammy Baldwin has done for the ag economy. And and uh, she understands how the ag economy works and, and under, you know, maybe even gives a rip about the farm bill, where, where, whereas her opponent, um, you know, doesn't seem to understand much of anything, really. Oh God! Could we could we get into that for a second? That that <laughs> it's one thing in the debate for Eric Hovde to say, "Well, I'm not in the Senate, so I'm I'm no expert on the farm bill," but then not once, but at least twice afterwards, he's almost mocking it, saying, "Why should I have to read up on the farm bill? I can't opine on that." When he's got no problem opining about every other topic under the sun. Again, I don't know that it flipped a lot of votes from people who you know are are farmers or you know, care about these issues. But I'm betting the number's not zero, Hans, of people who were like, ooh, this guy really doesn't want to do homework on behalf of the Wisconsin economy. Well, again, I think it, it just after a while, it becomes obvious that you've got a fella here who's got all sorts of money, who's not really from the area. And, and now this is his next thing. He wants to be a senator because he's tired of, you know, being a rich guy, I guess. So we're going to buy a Senate seat in an area that he doesn't really understand anything about. And when you look at Wisconsin, and maybe I'm showing my bias as a farmer, but when you look at Wisconsin and how the Wisconsin economy works, to to sort of pretend that the farm bill doesn't matter to a place like Wisconsin, I just don't know how, how delusional or, or just willfully ignorant you could possibly be. So where do we go? Uh, I, I know it's too early to, to you know start talking about 2025 already here, but the election will be behind us in just over a week. And we can't possibly go through all the hypotheticals, but let, let me let me start at the best possible one. What the outcomes next week set it up in a way that you could probably get the most that you could hope for realistically out of a farm bill which is already more than a year late. What kinds of things are we talking about? What would what would a farm bill passing say next March? What what could it look like realistically that you'd look at that and say, yeah, that's that that is that is a win for Wisconsin. Well, I'm going to I'm going to dial it right into the dairy uh, situation. I know that uh, Wisconsin Farmers Union and Farmers Union in general, National Farmers Union has been advocating for some sort of supply management system for for dairy so that um, we can start to turn that turn that tide and turn that that trend line around in Wisconsin that we've seen where we're losing dairy farms every single day. And and so we're, we're losing some more and more small to mid-sized dairy farms in favor of um, really mega farms. And and that's that would be uh, supply management would be really the only way, in my estimation, that that gets slowed uh, down and turned around. And by doing so, uh, that would be something that would be hugely helpful to um, to rural economies and local, you know, rural economies. The other thing that the Farm Bill needs to focus on, in my estimation, is antitrust legislation. Until and unless we take antitrust seriously, we're going to be in the same consolidation, you know, cycle that we've been in for some time. That's that's really hurt bottom lines on farms, and that also hasn't done any good for consumer prices. I don't know, and I, I'm certainly not in a position to, to quibble with anything that you said there. I just feel like supply management is going to be so easily tarred by corporate interests as, you know, uh, government quotas and socialism and everything else that my guess would be, and again, it's it's as uninformed as it comes, I, I will admit, that you might see, say, some kind of a pilot program somewhere uh, on it rather than something national. Um or, or maybe something's done because everything's going to be horse trading, right? I mean, you got to get 60 votes in the Senate to overcome a filibuster. So in order to get the 
the antitrust thing, which, you know, some would argue is the higher priority, then maybe you don't get the the supply management. And, and again, I don't mean to negotiate with ourselves here, but this is all to say to the listeners that even in the, in the best case scenario, there's going to be some negotiating. There's going to be Absolutely. some some hard choices and nobody's going to get everything they want. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't care about it and that you shouldn't vote for the best possible candidate who can get you a good deal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I think the biggest thing for the voters to understand is that you have to send honest brokers to the table, right? That's our job. We're, our job is to make sure that we elect folks who care, who do their homework, and who try and understand the big picture and try and understand the implications and aren't just there to support, you know, special interests and so forth. So, so that's where, that's where, you know, our vote matters to get people around that table. Uh, in this case, the farm, the, you know, the farm bill table, but all the different tables and all the different committees and so forth that we send people to Washington for, you know, ask yourself, is that somebody who is, uh, going to be an honest broker? Is that somebody who cares about the big picture? Is that somebody who's going to do their homework? Or is that somebody who just decided, geez, I'd like to be a senator now because I'm I'm bored? Well, it st- certainly strikes me that way with Eric Van Orden, who talked all about being on the Agriculture Committee and what a plum assignment that was, and did absolutely nothing to stand out uh, and, and to stand up for, you know, Wisconsin dairy interests or farming interests at large. And do we really want to see that in, say, an Eric Hovde? And we don't have time for it, but I would really point people toward uh, last week tonight with John Oliver, the program this past Sunday, did the one thing that no other newsroom seems to want to do and to say, realistically, for your Tom Tiffany's and your Donald Trump's, what would it actually look like to try to round up and deport more than 10 million people, especially on our farms. And I, all you can see, if you could see Hans throwing up his hands right now, you, we all know what folly that would be, but at least somebody was looking into it. So please take a look into it. And d- depending on the outcome next week, we might have to have some w- even weirder conversations. Hans, thank you for everything. Appreciate it so much. Take care. We'll talk again soon. Thanks a lot, Pat. Take care. All right. Chad Holmes is coming up right after this. You're up north. <laughs> You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. To go, here we go. It is high school sports season in full swing. You got football, you got basketball, not that terribly far away, which means that uh, you've got the clone of Chad Holmes. There are like four of him out there covering basketball games, football games, doing talk shows all at once, and even joining us occasionally on Up North News Radio on this uh, one week away from the election day. Mr. Holmes, are you there? Good morning. I am here. Can you see me? I see you. I hear you. There's no echo. There's no freeze frame. And now I get a knock on some wood over here. There we go. We're all good. How are things in beautiful Wausau? Oh, beautiful morning, I tell you. I feel good. I hope that uh, we get through the next week. <laughs> oh, we're going we're gonna to get through it. I'm not saying that we're <laughs> going to not look like, you know, we've been put through the ringer by the time it's all said and done. But uh, the, the recent events the the rhetoric that's been out there even jd vance in wausau yesterday telling women and minorities that he's just so over it they're being offended when you know white comedians make fun of them make fun of women and make fun of you know uh, minority groups i i just sense and again anything can happen in a week but boy it what few undecided voters are out there and there goes chad we lost him (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's gone where did i'll finish chad, the thought for you greg where did chad what, go I, I know i don't know but maybe 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 he's there now oh there he is he's back uh, what, what, what's going on here <laughs> it is the most mysterious studio in the civic media universe is the one in downtown wasa yeah uh, no, I, I don't think it was on my yet i don't I, know I, I, chad willing to fall on the grenade when it's my fault i don't think this is i think we're okay over here i think there's something going on over in the beautiful uh uh 
where are you again? <laughs> well, he's in Radio Park, and I'm in Chippewa Falls. And no, you're, you're... not Chippewa Falls. You're in where? Where are you again? Lake Wasoda. Lake Wasoda. Because every time I drive out there, I was over there a couple of weeks ago actually for a football game, and every time I go down on Highway 29, I see Lake Wasoda. And I always think Pat Craig. Right? He's he's in Lake Wasoda. That causes problems. Yeah. I mean, there's what? not so it, this isn't Loch Ness over here for goodness <laughs> I don't, sakes. I don't, I don't know what's going on here? All right. Well, let me ask. I should just ask shorter questions. Do you <laughs> feel not. like something's turning here in terms of people who have frankly right. heard enough of J.D. Vance and Donald Trump? I would hope so. <laughs> I tell you. I mean. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't. I have no idea whether or not there's anything that will switch over some let, of these. Battles. Let me make it worse. Let me make things even worse, and and I'm going to get yelled at. I don't know what caused me to do it yesterday, but I went on YouTube, went down the rabbit hole, and looked up the election night coverage from 2016 oh. as the news anchors were realizing that Donald Trump was going to win oh. the election that night. And a little voice in my head is like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And it was just a way to avoid, I think, any sense of complacency or overconfidence. But it, it also has completely smothered confidence overall. I can hear it in your voice. Well, I mean, even you can go back to 2020. I mean, going into that election, there were some polls that were showing President Biden or then candidate Biden with a rather significant lead. And in the end, it turned into, again, uh, electorally very very tight and of course and one of the things that is scary is when you can win by three million votes or you can win by seven million votes and it doesn't equal uh, an equivalent victory in the electoral college it's kind of like here in wisconsin for all these years where democrats could get close to 50 percent and still not come anywhere close to getting a majority in either house so uh, again i think there's reason to to be a little bit nervous but at the same time i i i don't know i mean to, again i going back to your first question whether or not people are looking at what happened at msg on sunday or listening to what's been said over the last number of weeks or seeing what the Democrats have actually done. And I, when something you talked about with Hans, boy, you look at some of the, uh, the legislation that truly affects people's lives in the rural areas and in, in areas of Wisconsin. And, and I don't know whether or not that, that connects, you know, in a way that it should connect. So uh, I guess the big answer is I have no idea what's going to happen next Tuesday night. Well, that, that part is factually correct. <laughs> we know that much. We, we don't, but we, we're trying to collect these little nuggets where we can. And I'm wondering about the nugget of early voting in the Wausau area. Uh, we can't possibly know how much of it is related to the, you know, the, the Doug Denny uh, pilfering of a ballot box, but <laughs> What 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 is your own sense of what early voting has been like around the area? I've heard uh, anecdotally uh, that it's been very active, and it's been something that has been uh, people are been, been enthused about. Uh, so I think that uh, in that realm, yeah, absolutely, it's something that shows that people are engaged, people are anxious to get out there and vote and to make sure that nothing occurs that would keep them from going to the polls so no i think that that is something that is sort of out there even here in central wisconsin that it would be uh, considered a positive uh, uh, trend in the next week now, what, what I, I wonder if um now 2020 of course was the year of, of mail-in ballots because of covid and i think in 2022 people really wanted to again participate because they could but I really feel like between what what people have learned since 2020 about mail-in and about early absentee voting, I feel like we've really turned some kind of a corner and accelerated. I think the the amount of early voting and absentee voting is only going to go up from here as people say, yeah, I like voting on Election Day, but I also want my vote to get in and get counted right away. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I'm still one of those traditionalists. I'm voting next Tuesday. I'm voting uh, on election day. And uh, the idea that, uh, that it won't be counted the same way, I think, is a fallacy. I, I, I'm going to push back on that, this idea that, oh, you vote earlier, somehow it, it's it's worth more. No, it's not worth more. It's worth the exact same. And those of us who, uh, who are going to be there come rain, shine, broken leg, or whatever it may be, we'll still get there. We're still going to vote. We'll be okay. All right. Chad has right. got a couple of great guests coming up today. <laughs> And uh, so catch that on 98.9 WXCO or on the Civic Media app. Chad, thank you so much. Greg Bach is back in two hours for Matt Air on Air as yeah. well. What do you got? We got Pat Kreitlow. That's you.
at 1030. Oh, gosh, that's right. And Sorry. Then Mary Hayes. All right. Well, maybe there'll be some other shows, uh, you know, to, to worth listening to after that. Hey, we'll try. We'll try our best. <laughs> I know. Pat bringing the show down again. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day up north. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 